Hey y'all, welcome to day three of my April Diamond series. I'm Shy in Second Life, and today we'll be enjoying a scenic boat tour on the land, Callis, as I talk to you about the 10 things to not do in SAO. So, in no particular order, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Number one, don't come to SL looking for love. Now, although there are many people that come to SL and they do fall in love in real life, don't come to SL looking for that. There are so many people that I feel look at Second Life as a dating site and it's really not intended to be that type of way. I definitely could understand how you could end up in a real life relationship in Second Life and how you could get into a Second Life relationship in Second Life because unlike real life, the communication comes before any physical in Second Life. So very, very deep bonds are built between people in Second Life. However, don't come to Second Life expecting those type of connections. If they happen organically, let them happen organically, but don't come, um, you shouldn't come with that particular goal in mind. I feel like when relationships form organically in Second Life, those tend to be the more lasting relationships, whether it be a intimate relationship or a friendship. The, the more organic, the absolute better. Number two, don't tell your real life business to these people on Second Life. Now, I know that you can build friendships with people in Second Life or you can build uh, romantic relationships with people in Second Life, but there is no reason why you should be telling people very, very intimate things about you in real life and about um, perhaps other people who have affected you in your real life. I've seen um, via Second Life um, on through Facebook, people tell people's business when they are upset and it is astounding the type of information that people will choose to divulge in the heat of the moment in anger about someone that they were once very good friends with for years on Second Life or very, or very close family members with for years in Second Life. Just don't tell people very, very personal parts of your real life. I understand, again, the building the connections in Second Life, but you have to be mindful that these people don't know you like that. Just because you met somebody and you guys became friends and maybe you guys have been friends for two, three years, I feel like because you guys built that friendship on Second Life, I just kind of feel like it's not smart to divulge that type of um, real life information to other people in Second Life. If people decide that they want to come and tell you about their real life, please be respectful of that and just don't let that information come out simply because you're upset with them and you don't care about keeping their secrets and you want to hurt their feelings and things like that that's such nasty work to do to someone who went out of their way to share personal parts of their real life with you so i just personally would recommend not to tell your real life business to people in second life if you want to tell them a little bit of something like this is where i live or whatever but it, nobody should know that you were once homeless or somebody close to you was on drugs or what you went through in your childhood those just should not be things that you are telling people in second life i don't care how close you feel like you are to them please be mindful that it's really it no they're not that close just don't do it number three don't exchange real life photos now for me there have been times where a lot of times people will fall in love with the avatar they'll fall in love with the look of the person or they'll fall in lust with the look of the person both of those things can be true However, if this is not somebody who you are intending on meeting in real life, I would not advise sharing personal pictures of one another. 
only if you guys are intending on meeting in real life and not because you know it's like oh one person could be hideous or something like that but what happens is um people have expectations of you based on the way your avatar looks many times not all the times but many times so what happens is if you're talking to someone who lives all the way on the other side of the world and you have no intention on meeting them when you guys exchange pictures not that either one of you will be unattractive however you both just might not be each other's type and that's okay however once you know what that person looks like behind the avatar and you deem that person to not be your type it really takes a toll on the role play because now when you see that person you no longer are seeing the avatar you're seeing the person behind the avatar now that's not always the case but a lot of times that is the case so if you want to kind of keep the fantasy alive especially when it's somebody that you don't intend on being with for any time or period in real life don't go out of your way to exchange photos and definitely don't exchange explicit photos i've seen some nasty work happen um, with that as well number four don't put too much stock in family now all of these things that i'm telling you guys about maybe one would apply to me but these are other things that i have simply observed via um second life on facebook families in second life they are good until they are not they are very much sour patch kids i've seen situations where mothers and families have slept with the daughter's boyfriends i've seen times where the father in second life has slept with his wife's best friend in second life and it gets even more diabolical um, than that so just don't put too much stock in family enjoy the role play enjoy the relationships enjoy the experiences but don't put too much stock into them because I feel like that's the quickest way for you to really end up hurt in second life and although I do not engage with a lot of people in second life it really hurts me to read some of the stories that I see people post on second life about how their families in second life have done them especially when they're coming from a real life environment where their families were not the best and so they're coming to second life and trying to basically rebuild bonds that may have been broken with them in real life to try to better themselves and then they'll give family members in second life who again they'll tell their real life business to and those family members will use that information against them in anger just don't put too much stock in them enjoy the experience and just when it's over if it ever is over just let it be over piggybacking off for of that don't put too much stock in friends either friends in second life they're going to come and go yes you will have friends that last a very long time but you will have a lot of fair weather friends as well so just be mindful of that be mindful that friends in second life they are very abundant it's very easy to make friends in second life but it's also even easier to lose friends in second life so just don't put your all into the friends in second life meaning don't put all of your emotions and your feelings into it don't get a sister in second life are oh, we gonna be sisters forever and then when two months down the line something happens she sleeps with your boyfriend or you heard her talk a smack about you or something like that or you told her some real life information that she told somebody else and then it got back to you and now you guys are not friend, no, friends no more now you're heartbroken and now you don't want to be on second life anymore don't let them do that to you your second life is just that is your second life. You cannot put yourself in positions where other people can affect your happiness on second life. This is the one space where you get to do things differently than you are doing them in real life. So take the time to be mindful of that and do things differently. So number six is be mindful of Abby kids. So in second life, there are times where an avatar child, which is basically an adult behind an avatar that is role playing being a child, they um they get a little 
they get a little extra they definitely do be mindful of them um they will do some very very nasty things behind your back um i have seen situations where the children avatars will end up becoming fast friends with the dad in a very inappropriate way and then the father wants to be with the avi child on the avi child's adult avatar and it's just it's very nasty work i've seen it so many times in second life avatar kids i just i don't know what some of them think but a lot of times these women, the women and the men will take these avatar kids and really wanting to have children play, like really wanting to have a child in second life and the avatar children will take advantage of them. They'll try to milk them out of all of the money that they have and then they'll try to get with the dad or get with the brother or just be very inappropriate within the role play. I understand that it's role play in second life, but sometimes I just feel like the way that you behave in second life is very much so an extension of the type of person that you are in real life um the type of character that you have in real life I am a firm believer that if you are a vindictive nasty mean person in real life you're going to be that way in second life as well you can choose to be different but it's very difficult for people to be different than who they are for long periods of time there will always be a time where they'll go back to the type of person that they actually are and that's when you can see how diabolical people really really can be so just be mindful of avi kids i'm not saying don't have avi kids but if you can get somebody who's a friend to be an avi kid that you can trust or you be the avi kid or get you a bot baby or a mesh baby i don't know but just be mindful of avi kids if you decide to come to second life or if you're new in second life or if you're old in second life or you're thinking about diving into some of these spaces just be mindful of those things Number seven is don't expect marriage to be like real life. Now, true enough, people get married in second life and things could be real cute in second life. But more often than not, marriages do not tend to have very lasting longevity in second life. Um, I find much like real life uh, uh, many times, the larger the wedding the shorter the marriage i don't know why that is but it is definitely some truth to that so if you meet somebody and you decide to get married i've seen it happen plenty of times i've gone to some very extravagant weddings and then two days later they're broken up so just don't expect it to be like real life now are there people that get to second life they find love they find their soulmate they get married in second life meet in real life get married in real life have children in real life does that happen yes is that the norm in my opinion no i feel like that is very far from the norm and i feel very very happy for those people who find those type of true connections in second life but understand that they are very far and few in between and so i do not want you to expect to find those type of things and those type of people and those type of connections in second life yes they can happen but let it happen organically and just don't expect for it to happen for you know that it can happen for you but don't let it be something that you just absolutely expect to happen for you because you've seen it happen with other people that's the quickest way to get your feelings hurt and we don't want to do that in second life we're, we're about no hurt feelings in second life number eight is don't lose yourself in your avatar now the beautiful thing about Second Life is that you can create your avatar to look any way that you want your avatar to look. Your avatar doesn't have to be a male, doesn't have to be a female, doesn't have to be a human. But a lot of times people will get so lost in their avatar because they put so much time and effort into making their avatar look a specific way, whether they want their avatar to look the way that they look in real life or they just want their avatar to be a representation of what they would want to look in, uh, look like in real life. I don't know, but 
a lot of times it's like it seems like they will lose their identity in their avatar or within the avatar that they have created i feel like that's a very dangerous space to be in in second life because i've heard people like talk about their avatars as though their avatars were them and it's like those are you guys are two separate people you know your avatar is an extension of you but your avatar is not an individual like you are so a lot of times people will kind of become very much so infatuated in their avatar and the look of their avatar and I will listen to them on Facebook and the way that they speak like they speak as though they are their avatar and that to me it does have a very very alarming tone to it because I do feel like when you are in second life it is very easy especially when you are new in second life it's very easy to get lost in second life there have been times where I have been going through things in sec in real life and I will come to second life and I'll just go to a beach by myself and when I tell you just being in that space I will I have felt like I was actually there, like actually zoned out, feeling like I was actually there at the beach. And I very much so was not. So it's very easy to kind of get carried away in the essence of Second Life and carried away in the awe of Second Life. But just be mindful to know that you are very different from your avatar and your avatar is very different from you. Your avatar is an extension of you. Even if you make your avatar to look exactly like you, your avatar is still very much so an extension of you and not anything close to who or what you are in real life because your avatar is not, is not a human. So a lot of people, I feel like the lines kind of get crossed or the lines kind of get blurred when it comes to that, because there are people that come to Second Life looking for Second Life to be an escape for them. And although it definitely can be, I think some people get wrapped up in the beauty of Second Life and how beautiful the avatars can be and how wondrous this space can be that they sometimes kind of get disconnected from the reality of the real life and the reality of the fact that this is an avatar. It's not you. It's an avatar that you created in whatever likeness that you choose to create your avatar in. But your avatar is not you and you are not your avatar. It is a vessel per se. It is a virtual world vessel for you to be able to use to explore with. And you can dress it up like a Barbie doll and do whatever you want to do to your avatar. But at the end of the day, you cannot do anything with your avatar outside of this virtual world. So just kind of make sure that you're not getting lost in your avatar. I've seen people have arguments on Second Life Facebook and they speak as though they're the avatar. And I've heard people in the comments like, you do know that you're not your avatar. Like you're really talking like you're really this avatar and you're not. So I've seen it happen. That's the only reason why I, it's even on the list. Number nine is don't expect you out of other people. You are you. There are a lot of people who will put on a facade like they can have your type of heart, your type of care, your type of concern, your type of style, your type of elegance, your type of the lifestyle that you like to live. Don't expect other people to be you like there are a lot of people who have very very big caring hearts in second life and they'll meet people and they are assuming that that person has a big caring heart like them only to find out that it is quite the opposite that person might be very nasty very snarky very backstabbing and things like that and people don't find out about these things until it is very much so too late until feelings have gotten involved and now it's very very deep and very very concerning the damage that people in second life are able to inflict on other people and that in my opinion solely comes from the fact that communication is the first 
thing that you build with people in second life. You can't touch anybody in second life. You can't, you know, do anything to anybody in, in real life, in second life. So the communication is the first thing that you, you, everybody gets to know people very well in second life. Everybody gets to talk to people all the time and you build very strong relationships with people in second life. But a lot of times what tends to happen is there will be a lot of people who are not like you, who do not have the type of heart that you have, who do not have the type of care and concern that you have. And I've seen so many people in Second Life just get completely obliterated by people who they thought were on their side, by people who they thought shared a common interest with them, by people who they thought were being genuine when they were actually being very, very much so a fraud. So just don't expect you out of other people. They show their true colors. You just have to give them a little bit of time. Time goes by so fast in Second Life. A week in Second Life is like a year in real life. I've seen people who have met on a Monday. They have been engaged on a Friday. And then the next Monday, Monday, they've had a wedding. And then by two weeks later, they might have a baby. And then a month later, all of that is over with. So things go by very, very quickly in Second Life, but things can also go out, go long. I'm not saying that all of the things that you may want to find in Second Life, you cannot find in Second Life. But what I am saying is don't look for it. If it's going to happen, it is going to happen. I've seen people create amazing bonds with people in Second Life, romantic as well as friendships that have gone um, to stand the test of time. Those things happen. Those things happen, but they are very far and few in between. People fall off. Um, A lot of times people's real life will just be life in. And so they won't come on Second Life as much. They won't get to enjoy the things that Second Life has to offer as much because they have, they have real life going on. And that's understandable. Everybody does. So just don't expect you out of other people. You're going to be disappointed every single time. It's only one you and it's only one you for a reason. And last but not least, number 10, do not live above your means in Second Life. Second Life is not a cheap game. It is not. Um, I heard one lady, I wish I would have known her name or remembered her name. She said, Second Life is expensive to start but not to maintain. And that is very true. However, Second Life can be expensive to even maintain. If you are living above your means, if you can only afford $8 a month for land in Second Life, then get you a piece of land that you can only, that you only have to pay $8 a month for. I don't care that your friend has a Sam that they pay 200 real life dollars for every month to live on. If you can only afford an $8 a month piece of land, get you an $8 a month piece of land. And not even so much whether or not you can afford it, um, but even if you can afford a land that's $250 a month, if you are not on SL enough, do not waste your money like that. That's crazy. That's crazy to spend all that money on a land that you're barely ever on. So I see so many people who live above their means and then they'll get in an argument with one of their friends. And then now all of a sudden, everybody knows that you never really had it like that. And they had to loan you money and blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. Because you're in SL living above your means. You're, you're in Second Life buying all of these expensive clothes, these fat packs and buying all these expensive shoes and things like that. Just living above your means trying to prove that you can hang with the big dogs or whatever don't do it this is second life this is second life you can live as grandiose or as minimal as you want to I've lived in some of every type of house in second life manners right down to little bitty huts Whatever I, wherever I want to live, that's where I live. If I want to find a piece of land and I have to pay $2 a month for that land, I'm going to find me a piece of land where I can pay $2 a month for that land. If I want to pay $8 or $15 or $100 or $200, then that's what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to do it so that I can go and talk to other people and say, oh, yeah, well, you know, I pay $200 for my land. That's crazy. 
that's crazy to me that people do that and people do that a lot in second life there are a lot of people in second life that cannot even afford to be on second life living the type of life that they're living on second life but they are going broke in real life putting money real life money into second life so that they could try to keep up with their friends and keep up with the extravagance of certain organizations in second life and things like that the people who can't afford it let them afford it if you are not in that space right now it is okay that doesn't mean that you never will be that just means that that's not where you are right now and it's very much so okay I love to I love to see a budget friendly um, chick. I love it. I love to see my budget friendly girlies. However, if you want to pop out and splurge, do that as well. But don't do it because that's what your friends are doing. Do it because that's what you want to do. Do it because that's how you want to experience your second life. So many people on second life live above their means and they'll try to downplay people who don't live above their means as though they're not doing enough. They're doing what they want to do in second life. There are many people in second life who have the facade that they are doing all of these grandiose things in second life, but then they'll, they won't even have like a home in second life. And that's fine too. Second life is a space where you don't need a home. You cannot have a home in second life and be fine. There are plenty of lands that you can live on for free where you don't need to have a home. But people are so, they're so infatuated with trying to prove themselves to other people. That goes on a lot in real life as well. I don't understand it in either realm why people do things like that, but people definitely do. But I just want to say, do not live above your means. It is nobody really cares. People will try to shame you in Second Life. Some people will, not all people will try to shame you in Second Life for maybe not having a place to stay or not dressing as well or not doing this with your avatar and not doing that with your avatar. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do because at the end of the day, they're going to do what they want to do. So just make sure you're not living above your means in Second Life so that you can enjoy Second Life to the fullest and enjoy all that Second Life has to offer. You don't have to look at Second Life as a financial burden or a strain on your pockets in any way, shape or form because you're living in a space in Second Life that is affordable for you and it is financially comfortable for you. That's the best, best thing to do in Second Life. In my opinion, that's the best way to have a wondrous Second Life. So that's it, you guys. That is all 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love the community that we are building. I'm so appreciative of all of my supporters. So make sure that you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Um, the landmark to this place will be in the description box below. So as always, I'll see you guys next time.